Hello team, good morning, welcome to episode number 37 of the RDO Podcast. As always, with the Auto Bros, Jason and Alex on camel. And speaking of Auto Bros, we're celebrating today. We are celebrating. <laughs> today it marks the 365th day. Or 64th. Well, did you start on, was it, because it's, so, so you guys were, it's the 14th today, right? Yeah. You started on the 15th of... What month is it? April? April. 15th of April 2020. Yeah. You started your business. So this is the 365th day, bro. Tomorrow is 366. Cheers. Cheers to that. So it is about 10 a.m. Salute. Mmm. Mmm. Nice. Shout out to Simsy. We're on the whiskeys early in the morning. And shout out to Dad. Dad gave that to me as a gift. Mm. Um, Crystal is back. Um, Johnny Walker, 18 years old. Yep. Um, just turned 18. Just turned 18. And then plucked off the shelf. Yeah, so we, we popped off on it since <laughs> turned 18. Um, so, 12 months down. First time of obviously starting your own business. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, I think statistically speaking, was it like 80% of businesses failed in the first 12 months? Or 70, 70, 70 or 80% or something like that. So considering the fact that you started this business uh, when COVID had just teed off, so this was back when people didn't really know what COVID yeah. was and how bad it was going to be, um, it was before JobKeeper was approved, but because you're a new business, you didn't get any money. I got nothing. Got nothing. No help from the government at all. Nothing. Also, in, this, in the meantime, no help from the bank either because yeah. it was an absolute nightmare for anyone trying to get finance 12 months ago. Yep. Um, so you've really done this all on, on your own accord. So congratulations, yes, thank man. you. Made it. Um, it's been... Well, time for us, Michigan. Like, if you reflected back over the last 12 months, what have you... What would you say? Mm. And I'm like, it's been a good break from from the... Uh, the, the grind. The grind, yeah, mm-hmm. before... Um, last year was very profitable. Um, if, mm-hmm. like the, if I had, had, if I had still been going this year, like I have last year, mm-hmm. uh, I'd be wearing a very blinged out watch. I think <laughs> <laughs> everything would be the same, just with more money. Mm-hmm. This, this, this year, this quarter has been a bit mm-hmm. of a struggle. Yeah. yeah. It's been, it's been very rough, but still here. And it's not like I don't, I know. It's not like I don't know what it is that I need to do. I know what I need to do. Yeah. I've already done it. This this month's already kicked off on the, on the right foot. So mm-hmm. um, I'm putting those measures in place. And I think it's good. The lesson I've learned of late is, is if you can objectively look at your business and go, okay, well, here's a shortcoming. How can I fill yeah. that in? Um, I would also say, too, just having a clear mind and not stressing about mm. the result yeah. Um, but actually working on a fix. Mm. So if you know that there's a hole there, address it. Yeah, 100%. Because I know that um, that was probably a tough thing for you to um, to change that mindset because cause I, I know it was for me when I left work as well mm. because we were in that go, 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 go sort of mentality for so many years yeah. when like you'd literally, you'd do a deal, there's no time to celebrate because it's just your job. you got to go straight on to the next thing and do the, whatever the next task is. Um, so I, I feel like that, did that take you some time to adjust your mindset? And I guess, in a way, slow down and relax into this a little bit? Not as much as I thought it was going to, only because I've known for many years that that's not the pace, that's not a sustainable pace. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I was a big proponent prior to me starting my own business of the four day work week mm-hmm. and about getting more, um, more efficiency and effectiveness out of a shorter working week, mm-hmm. working smarter, not harder. Yeah. So I did, I did know that what I probably haven't done is I've definitely not worked hard, mm-hmm. but I also haven't worked smart enough. Okay. Okay. So, um, no, in terms, there was no real hangover from the the um oh except my weight like i like put on a sack of weight yeah in that time because yeah. facebook keeps reminding me it shows me like two three years ago mm. and i reckon i was in the 90s or something then um you just remind me of something too and i won't talk about it now but um the the weight thing uh, i've got a really good excuse for it <laughs> okay fantastic so based on scientific research i was already 
I was already, I already mentally knew that I was not going to work at the same pace of, yeah. as what I was at dealership time because mm-hmm. I didn't feel it was. It's not sustainable. It's one of the main reasons why you did it, right? Yeah. Is to not just work yourself into the ground for someone else. Yeah. I'm not going to put my, my health and my, and my, um, my mental, mm-hmm. um, it's mental health too, right? My physical and mental health. Yeah, 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 at the risk of it. So, and look, I, I would say too that going into business, although I think a lot of it has been a lot easier than I thought, mm-hmm. I would also say it's not for everyone. Mm. You know, I got I got to a point where I got to like my last thousand dollars in my bank account, and I was yeah. like, well, like I had a shed full of cars, which is good, but the, you know, not knowing if you could pay the next bill until something happens. Mm is is pretty daunting yeah and um and you know having work well, i haven't had my own business before so there was always money yeah you know there was there wasn't and getting there was wage, security in, in a way yeah you know, yeah a salary but um, in saying that i'll say the biggest plus is just being able to maintain connections you know i've spent more time with you mm-hmm. not sorry we work together but yeah more time with the family more time with friends being able to connect with you know just lunches. The lunches that I've had, I've, I've achieved more at lunch with business partners yeah. and and uh, and friends than I ever did when I was at work. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's something that no one puts any tangibility on. Mm. Like, it's super important. You yeah. know, it's super super important. Yeah. Plus, it's given me scope to do some other things. You know, delving deeper into the investment in crypto. Crypto world's been really really good. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, we would have been traveling more if we were able to. Yeah, so, yeah, of course. Yeah, but um, like Tasha and I, you know, that's, it's now about me trying to find less time to spend at home. <laughs> <laughs> to get you got to you gotta set more appointments, mate. You might have to start doing some cold calling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Have an absolute result. So. Which is the complete opposite in our, in our relationship dynamic. I've always worked mega hours compared to her. Yeah. Now it's flipped. Yep. Um, and she wants you out of the house. Yeah, yeah. Well, we only have a small apartment. It's not like we can, mm. we can't sort of hide at opposite ends of the, the unit. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, it's 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 been really good. Mm. It's been really good. No, that's cool, man. It's like credit works for you. It's a massive accomplishment. Mm. Um, it's it has inspired me mm-hmm. in in ver- in various ways over the last twelve months. The the biggest thing that I really like about it is it is taking your chance and putting your back against the wall mm. and going, am I going to sink or am I going to swing? Yep. And generally, phone candles, we swing. Yep. Right? Yep. Um, our parents did. They, you know, they came here with nothing, built yep. their own businesses, did whatever they needed to do. Yep. Um, and I think it's a it's an admirable thing to get yourself out of the relative security, and I say relative security, of, of wage life and, uh, yeah, put yourself out there and, and make it happen yourself. It's funny, I, I saw an old friend from school, we ran into each other, mm. and we just got talking and, and he's become a lawyer, which is what he always wanted to do, mm-hmm. and um, then he asked what I did and I told it him that smells it, good, isn't it? It's sweet, isn't it? Yeah. It's sweet. Uh, for those that are just listening, it's mm. a bottle of Johnny Walker Gold, I think? It's... 18 year old, just a blend. Um, I'm not usually a Johnny Walker fan, but but that's like, that's actually really nice. Because yeah. I find Johnny Walker tends to be very um, raspy, is not the word, but harsh. Hard, like a yeah. very harsh, yeah. But this one, I mean, it's not the smoothest in the world, but it's definitely, I think it's on the sweet yeah. the sweet side. Um, um, I, I'm i an absolute whiskey novice. Like, I've literally only started drinking whiskey in the last two years, I reckon. Yeah. Um, so. You know, I'm feeling my way through it. And one of the things that, um, one of the misconceptions I had about whiskey was about blends. I was like, oh, if it's a blend, then you just, you know, it, it's like, have you got a couple of barrels that you've got little bits left in the end, but you just blend them together to have a product to go out. But from watching uh, my mate Simsy's podcast, Whiskey and Cynicism, because um, he's a massive whiskey aficionado, mm-hmm. and he knows everything in the world about it. Um, he, I, I was watching one of his podcasts the other day where he was talking about uh, the skill that goes into blending. Sure. Because, again, like, it, you can't just... It's not just drink. It's not King's Cup, you know? Yeah. You know that old drinking game that you used to play where everyone's drinking all the different things and then you have to pour little bits in it and usually someone spits in it and then whoever loses has to scull the whole thing? That's not the blend you're going for. Yeah. You know? Like, this is beautiful. This is really, really nice. Mm. Um, 
so there is a there's a skill to to blends but i do i do a rogue blend at home so i have an infinity bottle that i always put like the last the last you know 30 40 mils mm. of whatever whiskey i'm finishing mm-hmm. or rum or whiskey and i just pour it into the in, in, infinity bottle right and it gives you a different taste every time some okay. of them have been really good yep. some of them have been really bad Dog shit. but the bad one instead of drinking it you just stop yeah and you just wait till you add the next thing on it and it just constantly that's why it's called infinity because you've got an, an infinite uh, uh, amounts of taste. Is that a thing? I've never heard of that before. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, so really? I've got I've got two I've got two infinity bottles at home, mm. and one I just use like if I if I want to drain a bottle, I just I just pop it into it. But the other one, yeah, I, I just add stuff to it. And what a lot of people do is they will, they will take the label off the bottle, mm-hmm. stick the label on the outside, so they can sort of get an idea of what they've what they've added to it. Yeah, okay. I don't do that. I just I, I don't drink enough of it now to um yeah to to uh, to really delve that deep but yeah it's something interesting yeah mm. that's a, that is a thing yeah. you, you you polish bottles off so yeah yeah <laughs> so it's no good to you i've i've slowed down a lot which yeah. has been good um because i i have actually only just cracked the bottle that so dad did that, that for christmas didn't he yeah so he got me a bottle as well not the same thing he got me a just kind of think of what it was now but it was an 18 year old as well a scotch mm. really nice too um but i he got that in christmas i'm i'm only halfway through that now now in fairness i could bought two other bottles of whiskey at the same time <laughs> yeah, which yeah. i have drank but it's now mid-april so that's uh, a little bit unheard of for it to last that long because i am uh, making a concerted effort to cut back well i have to tell you it's going to my four drinks a week thing which mm-hmm. i found very easy to do mm. Alcohol hits me harder now yeah. than, than it has. Yeah. And obviously, you just build a resilience over time. Mm. You know, if you're having two, three drinks a day, yeah. that that alcohol has to be processed some, mm. somehow, you know. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, I, I even went, touch on, just went to a golf course just to have a just to have an afternoon drink. And you, I thought, oh, we're just going to have a couple beers. After one, I was good. Mm. I didn't need any more. Uh, which is good. Like, yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, cheap drunk. Cheap drunk, yeah, it's a useful thing. Um, I know that my whiskey and red wine and dark beer consumption is about to start going up because we are getting into colder weather. Um, like, and but that, that's a good thing for me too because again, like in summer, like you'll drink beers and you might have four or five beers in if you start in an afternoon because it's hot and you just feel like that refreshing sort of drink. Whereas I think in winter, my my volume lowers mm. and because I drink sort of heavier sure. stuff um like i i love just having like a really good like dark ale and just let it go to whatever the room temperature is because um with dark house obviously that if it, if they warm up a little bit you can actually get a lot more flavors mm-hmm. out of them and you might sit on one of those for an hour yeah you know or two hours or something like that if it's a big enough class. yeah um but i see, really enjoy that those are the ones i'm trying to cut out it's just the couch the couch alcohol yeah because it's yeah. just getting in a in a I was just getting in a routine just get home mm. you know have something to eat crack out the alcohol and just have a couple of drinks yeah night. and i've realized i don't need it yeah and i've been doing four drinks four four drinks a week for the past two months yeah okay. easy yeah yeah fair easy. enough i mean like it's it's relatively easy for me because i don't drink until nate goes to sleep mm. so it's like but it doesn't go to sleep like three times a day <laughs> yeah well Funnily enough, he'll be awake right now and drinking, but yeah. whatever. Um, it's my day off. It's my <laughs> RDO. Um, but yeah, so normally nine times, um, I'll wait until he goes to sleep, which is normally about 6.30, 7 o'clock at the moment. And then we are you know, normally in bed by 9 o'clock, so you don't need the time to have one drink most times. Yeah. And, you know, then you eat, watch a bit of TV and go to bed. Tell me your weight loss thing. So it's not weight loss, it's... Uh, it's I was, I was listening to a podcast um, yesterday, actually, um, called The Huberman Lab. Uh, it's run by a guy called Andrew Huberman, who is a uh, professor and a lecturer um, on, like, neuroscience. Mm-hmm. And he was, I was listening to it. I can't remember if it's his latest one, but um, it was about the sex hormones. So testosterone, um, estrogen, and essentially how to kind of optimize your levels on both of those because 
again, even for, for men, right? So everyone thinks that men just need to have more testosterone. That's not necessarily the case. Like you, we do have estrogen in our bodies and mm -hmm. it's about having a proper balance of it. But one of the things that he mentioned in that podcast is the, the thing that is clinically most likely to reduce a man's, a man's testosterone uh, level. What do you think it is? Well, I, I think I know what it is. Yeah, so childless. Yeah, so it's expectant fathers. Yeah. So apparently, um, expectant fathers it usually experience a drop of testosterone of fifty percent. Mm. Their cortisol levels, which is pretty much your stress hormone, goes down by three times. Mm -hmm. Which again, that's a good thing. Um, and your estrogen level doubles. Right. As well, and obviously, the whole point of it is to make you not go fucking mental when your sure. infant starts crying and you throw it against the wall. Yeah. Um, so that, that can be pretty significant, but one of the things too, is that, um, sorry, so your estrogen that goes up by 50%, it's your, it's a, um, a hormone called prolactin goes up and prolactin helps you actually retain body fat. And what, what he was saying, the research suggests the reasons why dad bod is a thing. A lot, of, a lot of people think they get dad bods because they eat in sync with their pregnant wife. Right? Like, obviously, she's putting weight on, so you eat too much and whatever. It actually doesn't seem to be the case. The, the, the data is suggesting that what is actually happening with the hormones in your body is that, number one, obviously, it's dropping all the hormones that will make you over-aggressive with an infant, which is not going to be helpful. But number two, um, the prolactin increase and the testosterone drop actually helps you retain more body fat with the idea of your body's preparing for the fact that it knows it's going to have many, many sleepless nights. Right. So it's actually storing excess energy yeah, okay. at the same time. Um, then how did I get a dad bod? Uh, you were expecting me to be a dad, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> um, but no, it's, it's interesting, right? Because like, I mean, I know it too. Oh, sorry. The, the other thing too, they said that the they've done they've been trying to research what um how long these effects last for after childbirth and essentially what it comes down to is it depends on the amount of time the father actually spends with the infant because if the let's say that you're you know deadbeat dad and you just battle those effects go away pretty mm -hmm. much straight away well because the need the need's not there that's right yeah. um th so then you get then you go back the other way where it's like, all right, well, I'm ready to start competing for mates again. So your testosterone goes sure. back up, estrogen goes down, um, cortisol goes up a little bit too. There's an interesting relationship too between the sex hormones and cortisol as well, they're, they're explaining. So um, a lot of people, like we grew up in a time where they were like, cholesterol's bad, don't eat cholesterol, mm. right? It's wrong. So cholesterol is actually the building block that your body uses to produce hormones. Mm. But depending on what state your body's in will depend on what hormones it turns that cholesterol into. Mm -hmm. So obviously, men, you want to have a bit, some test, uh, some cholesterol to create testosterone. However, if you're stressed out, it will instead turn that cholesterol into cortisol, which is right. your stress hormone. Yep. Which obviously then that becomes a negatively self-fulfilling prophecy yeah. because your cortisol levels raise, your testosterone levels decrease. So you you experience more stress. You you're not like testosterone makes you feel good. Yep. Right. Um. So yeah, it becomes sort of negative self fulfilling prophecy. Whereas if you can, you're gonna actually have to do the actions first rather than your brain telling you what to do to yeah. actually get yourself out of that spot. Could this be a case of um, you research biasing something that um, supports? No, honestly, I I. To, to take an even further step back, the whole reason why I started listening to this um, Huberman Lab thing was because I found myself engaging too much in political shit the yeah. last couple of weeks. So I was like, you know what? It's it's not helpful for my mindset. Yeah. So I'm going to go and listen to something else. Now, what did frustrate me early on um, is, so he, he essentially, the way he has set these um, his podcasts up, it's clinical, right? So you, you're supposed to start at episode one and work your way through because all the different mechanisms build off each other. Now, what frustrated me is I got up to episode two or three and it was he was like, let's talk about the importance of sleep. And I'm like, okay, I'm not going to get proper sleep for a little while longer. Um, obviously, Nate is starting to sleep a lot better now. So probably every second I get a good sleep now, which is amazing. But... Um, you know, if you look at potentially adding another one at some point in time, the sleep's going to go away again. 
But yeah, so he was talking about how important sleep is and um, all the different effects that it can have on your body. I, I want to spear off, but we'll come back. That mm -hmm. sleep thing. So I, I think I've said that on this before. I'm very pro sleep. Mm -hmm. I'm very good at it. Mm -hmm. But it does not come automatically. It's not like you just go down. No, you have to work out. Yeah, yeah, and I was talking to a friend during the week, and she was saying she she sleeps like shit all the time, but she's drinking al alcohol up until ten o'clock at night, yeah. expecting to go to sleep. And that's something I've noticed since I've stopped drinking alcohol, like mm -hmm. basically during the week. Yeah, my my sleep's even better. Yeah, but things yeah. like dimming the lights before you go to bed, mm -hmm. not reading like work emails, like yeah. of all the time. stressing she'll yourself out. Yeah, she'll read a work email at quarter to nine right before she's going to sleep. Yeah. Like that's crazy. Yeah. We've even realised in at our place that um, the lounge room lights are white lights. Yeah. But the you know that little bit of like sort of Nate's area just off the yeah. side of the lounge room, that lights those are yellow. Yeah. So we turn the white lights off at night now and just have that one on instead because it's like having night mode on your phone. Like yeah. it's that warmer sort of light which makes you like more likely to go to sleep. Well, we turn the lights off as we go. So obviously when we have dinner, we've got all the lights on. Yep. And then when we sit on the TV, we've got like a kitchen light on and a lamp, just a lamp behind the TV. Mm -hmm. um, and then we turn like the kitchen light off into a real soft light. So we actually like, we, we, we gradient back yeah, to, right. to dark before we get a bit. Yeah. And look, that's really smart. Yeah. Um, there is so, it's one of the other things he talks about in, in the Huberman uh, lab podcast is the importance of light exposure to set your day up right. Mm. So one of the things that he advocates for for sleep is to get somewhere between two and 10 minutes of natural light in your eyes first thing in the morning. Mm. So go for a walk, mm. right? Get out, go for a walk. And that that exposure to the blue light that you get early in the, like they get first thing in the morning and if you get it early enough, actually sets yourself up your circadian rhythm so your body will feel like it yeah. wants to go to sleep later on at night. Again, if you're then shoving your iPhone in your face with the blue light still on your phone late at night, it stuffs up your circadian yeah. rhythm. That's why people don't sleep well. It's not the, don't they say that getting that blue light in your butthole is really good for it? And that's why there's that uh, spreading your cheeks into the sun in the morning. It's like one of the best things that you can do. Apparently, that's something that has been um, confirmed to myth. Poo-pooed, yeah, they poo-pooed that theory. Right. Um, again, Andrew Huberman has spoken about this before, where um, there, were, there was theories that um, human beings have light receptors in their skin, and especially in sensitive areas, hence the butthole thing. Mind you, buttholes go through a fair bit of work some days. So mm. Yeah, but not in not even the light of day. No, that's true. Yeah, they don't, they don't That's where it. the sun don't shine. Yeah, exactly right. Um, but no, that, that's been, uh, that's been disproven. The hypothesis that if you have your eyes closed that you can sense light through your skin, it's more likely that your eyes are picking up the light coming through your eyelids. Or you feel heat. Or that too. Yeah. yeah. Um, the other thing too, actually that, that brings up to another interesting scientific point, um, about sunburn. So I used to get sunburn really, really easily. Like I've got fairly fair skin. Um, and I get sunburnt way less easier, or I have done in probably the last, it's really been about six years since I've stopped wearing sunglasses all the time. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know this too. So your eyes have UV receptors in them, which tells your body when you're being exposed to UV radiation and therefore to release melanin. So you get tanned. Mm -hmm. If you have sunnies on and you're out in the sun, your body can't sense that you're in UV, which is why it doesn't release the melanin, why you get burnt. Yeah. So since I stopped wearing sunnies, which again, I'll still wear them on days where I know I'm going to have like, like sound like cleaning the roof or something like that. Yeah. I'm going to have like sun going into my eyes because you want to protect your eyes too. Yeah. Um, I'll wear sunnies then, but I'll put sunscreen on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, now. Cause like, you got you to be careful because you start to get pterygiums, which is skin growing over the eyes. Yeah. To try and protect yourself from the sun. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't wear sunnies at all. And yeah, I, I don't get, I don't really get sunburned. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so isn't science fun? Then the body, the body's amazing. The oh body's yeah, amazing thing. Absolutely. So hold on. So you went from human sleep, and then the re you you were telling us why you went back. Yeah. So I I haven't listened to all of the sleep ones because I'm like it's just not realistic for me to get proper sleep right now. Yeah. Um, and I know how important it is, and I know the effects that it has on me when I go like. We, we've been really good for a couple of months now. It's been good. Yeah. Um, and the main thing is it's coincided with Nate not getting sick. 
Yeah. So he hasn't been sick for over a month now, which has been really good. Um, sometimes you now he's still, because he's still teething and that sort of thing too, so he can be a little bit irritable during the night and wake up a lot. But, you know, it's completely different than when you when you have like tonsillitis sure. or anything, right? So that's been really good. But, yeah, I, I was like, okay, I can't, I can't focus on sleep, so what am I going to actually focus on at the moment? Um, and, yeah, just listening to that one, it was... I, it was interesting because I knew that men's testosterone drops when you're expecting a child, when you have one. I didn't think it would be 50%. Mm. Like, that's a that's a pretty significant drop, mm. you know? Um, so, yeah, maybe if I uh, if I come across as a little bit like whining or something like that, maybe that's why. <laughs> maybe it's because my body's uh, preparing me to be a better parent. Yeah, it could be. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say you've been whiny at all. Mm. Um, you know, and, and the reason why I... I brought up what I brought up is because I thought this, I was waiting for you to say that's the reason why your your body makeup was the way that it was from the DEXA scan. Um, oh, look, I think it's a factor, mm. like, realistically. Um, there's been there's been a lot of factors in, involved in it. Not, like, the number one factor is that I eat too much mm. shit and have done for a long time. I noticed this last week, too, actually. Um, last week, not because I was trying to or anything like that, but... I reduced my meat intake significantly last week and I struggled. Like I did a workout on Tuesday, which was not that hard. It mm. wasn't, it wasn't a big one. I did, I did squats, but I'm squat like 50 kilos. Mm. Like it's nothing, nothing extreme. Um, but I did like, I think the squats, push ups, pull ups, uh, and ab wheel. Mm. God, it hurts. Yeah. But, um, I couldn't walk right until Saturday. Yeah. And then I did a heavy workout on Sunday and I re-upped my meat intake to what it was before. And I feel perfect for that. Yeah, I do think though, because I've done this test on my own body a couple of times where it really takes, if, if you've reduced it in one week, you really need to do it for four weeks to mm. be able to know like what it's really like. Because right. you, obviously your body's gone through that adjustment um, mm. period. But I had a rough one. Yes, I went to the gym yesterday and I couldn't finish the, yeah. the thing. And like, I'm usually I'm at least finishing them, but I was, and I, I think I had bad prep. I had a very busy day. I didn't eat, like I, I only ate half my lunch. Right. Just, I just had so many things on. Mm-hmm. And I think all those things sort of factor, factor. Yeah, in. for sure. I mean, there, there's so much that goes into having a workout. Yeah. Um, like, even, even on Sunday, too, like, because um, I had a terrible sleep the night before as well, and I think just mentally I just wasn't in it. So I yeah. pushed through, but, like, you know, I'm you not... could have been better, yeah. Oh, I could have been way, way better. Mm. Oh, we do need to speak... Sorry, just shifting gears again. Mm. I think um, Bitcoin got a new all-time high this morning. Yeah, it did, too. 80,000 Aussie. Yes. Yeah. Was it... S- I think it was, like, 83 grand or something yeah. this morning. Yeah. Um, so everyone that, you know, listened to me back, <laughs> back last year and, and, and didn't buy it 26 or 35 or whatever, whatever the number was. Yeah. Yeah. There's a reason why we put disclaimers to say this is not financial. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it's, look, it's, it's interesting, right? Like, um, I, I don't know, like, it's interesting how even at all time high prices, it still continues to just routinely move up like obviously more and more people must be starting to believe in it and trying to get in on it um because yeah it just keeps steadily going up like i've got exposure to about six different coins at the moment mm. and i bought i bought 500 dollars of bitcoin like it'd be two months ago now yeah. i think i bought it and like I've, I've made some plays on some other coins that have had some more like higher and lower sure. spikes and that sort of thing. I'm going to make a little bit of money off them. But that Bitcoin just keeps on chugging and now yeah. it's worth 700 bucks. So I saw something news through the week that really pissed me off and it was they started the thing by saying, did you know that Bitcoin uses more power mm. than mm. Argentina or something like that? Yeah, I've seen that. And then they said Visa, Visa card can do 400,000 transactions using the same amount of power as um, a Bitcoin transaction. Yeah. And what really annoyed me was that Visa doesn't store your wealth. That's right. So have you added the bank 
Yeah. So add all the banks together, the power consumption of a bank, a bank teller, an ATM machine, mm. add all those up and let's see. Yeah. Because it's it closer resembles Bitcoin closer resembles a bank store wealth as well as a a a, a, um, a, distri- a distributor of wealth, mm. a payment processor. Yeah. Visa's only payment processor. And you don't put your card you don't put your money on a Visa card, mm. you put your money in a bank and Visa is a conduit between your bank and the merchant. Yeah, like is it just because we're getting older and maybe we're more, more mindful of it? Or is it just me where it seems like it doesn't matter what the subject is, but obviously if you've got if you've got a position that, you know, you, you have an incentive to um, mm-hmm. to uh, put forth your position on, on anything at the, at the moment, I just feel like everyone's gotten super sloppy and super lazy and they'll just throw out stuff that, like, can be so easily discredited, just like you yep. just done, but it doesn't seem to matter because it's you just throw it out there forever and will never change. But has it always been this easy to discredit? Always? Like I, I just feel like there, there's that many arguments that get thrown out every single day now on a whole range of subjects. Who, if you looked into it for five minutes, you'd go, "Yeah, but that's that's you just picked one angle that works for you." Have you ever thought of A, B, C, D, E, F, G? Well, that segues nicely into the thing. Uh, the other thing I wanted to bring up is um, there's rumours that Apple is going to get rid of the podcast library. Right. Now, for those who don't know, Apple invented podcasting, basically. Yeah. Steve Jobs jumped on with uh, Adam Curry, yeah. the podfather. Infamous. Right. And they basically hooked up and... and, and Adam Curry gave Steve Jobs a massive library of already existing podcasts, and then and then um, Steve Jobs basically marketed and in, in, integrated it into yeah, to Apple products, Apple products yeah. which sent it through the roof. Yeah. If you think about it, that's the only thing that Apple does now that's free. Yeah. So th- they are all on about paid services now. Right. Not, not even just devices, but Apple TV, um, Apple Music, you know, they're all about these, a- Apple Credit, they're, they're into the um, subscription service mm. and they want to get paid for it. Now, Adam Curry said something, oh, I watched another uh, an really interesting podcast that he was on talking about the future of all this stuff. Mm-hmm. He blames Apple for lowering the amount that music and content is worth. Yeah, that's right. Being at 99 cents. Yeah. Make everything 99 cents mm-hmm. and all the apps. So back back in the day when I first got the very first iPhone, every app was 99 cents. Mm-hmm. 99 cents, 99 cents, 99 cents. I think it was a dollar 99 in Australia, but in America it was 99 cents. Yeah. And then the song was 99 cents. Yeah. And he's like, there are people out there that will pay way more for that thing. But because Apple says, no, no, we want everything to be 99 cents. Yeah. That drop the price. That's right. Yeah. Right. And they've 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 destroyed the value of the product. And for music, especially like we spoke when we had Rob on, mm. that is corrupt. That 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 whole so out of that ninety nine cents, the the artist probably receives point zero 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 one of yeah. that of a cent. Of a cent. Yeah. It's crazy how that's put together. Mm. And the beauty of podcasting was that you know we could do this for free and maybe get a sponsor that we choose mm. to to then fund us yeah um and and, and johnny walker get on board yeah. <laughs> well, well, i prefer lark because it's australian yeah yeah actually lark lark get on board um and we will drink Tasmanian. every podcast if you like yeah, yeah we'll do that for yeah you. some so, of the arguments but also the the his idea and adam curry was massive on um advertising he, he started companies he got rich yeah. by creating a media company to 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 make advertisers with creators yeah but he's since realized that that's not the way to go either because now we can't have a proper conversation if we're shit candy mm-hmm. johnny walker or lark mm-hmm. even though that's how we feel that's our true authentic self yeah, well we right. can't because we're owned by a certain entity yeah know? so um it kind of fits that apple would get rid of it mm. because there's no benefit to them they don't make any money out of podcast the only thing that i would say is if Apple, because Apple is, they're doing okay. Like they're making some money. They're about to crack a trillion dollars cash. Yeah, like they're doing all right. So all I would say is if you were the only platform that still offered podcasting as a free service, would you not get more users on your iPhones and stuff like that? 
No, but they, they you're still going to have access to podcasts, but they have a, a massive library. They're holding the library at the moment, so they're going to get rid of that. But are, are they? But apparently, that's okay. word on the street. Right. Cause, they will, and it would fit with their business model. Because like with us, if you're listening to this on, on Apple Podcasts now, they don't host our content. They, they're like, we go through Podbean. So Podbean hosts the content. Yeah. And then through an RSS feed, Apple, like you can just access it via the Apple podcast. Yeah. App. So they don't actually have to host any of the data or anything yeah. like that, which is really, it seems fairly cost effective for yeah. Apple. I think they're wanting to move to the Spotify model, which is shit. <laughs> Absolute shit. Well, yeah. look, they'll do it better than Spotify. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know if I, I've said it on this. I had a horrible experience with Spotify. I deleted it. I, I think you've said it multiple times. Oh, yeah. drives me insane. So yeah, Apple again, would be like from a from a producer's uh, oh, yeah. perspective, they were the worst to deal with trying to get podcasts on. I actually have to like this. The, the audio for this records in MP4. I have to actually go online and convert it to MP3, mm-hmm. which is a shit of file to be able to put it on Spotify. Yeah. So I'm sorry that our silky tones don't come through in the uh, clear clarity of MP4 because Spotify won't allow it. Yeah, so they want to move to, like, paid exclusives. And they've got the money to go and buy all the best podcasts in the world. Mm-hmm. So they'll still do podcasting, but yeah. just in a different way. Yeah, yeah. So we need to move on to Podcast 2.0. Yeah. Adam Curry has been part of some of these apps, but also just put it out there. So this, this is what it should look like. Go and make an app. Mm. And there's, there's one that's called Breeze that I want to look into, yeah. which you pair to your crypto wallet. Mm-hmm. And it will, using the Lightning Network, for every minute or every hour, it'll just deduct, it'll just take funds out of your, yeah. uh, your wallet mm-hmm. to pay for the creator. And then the creator can allocate the funds like you and I, so so we could split half half. It could automatically come in and go to our individual wallets. Mm. We don't have to manage it. It's yeah. just done automatically, yeah. and that's the most direct form of like. Obviously, Breeze would get a percentage of that. They might take one percent, mm. and then the rest of it is just distributed wherever wherever we want. And it could really do some things like if you wanted to get a producer that was overseas, because mm. there's nothing. There's no reason why our producer couldn't be in a different country. True. Right? Well, what a great way. This thing automatically just paid us all. Mm-hmm. We could set different, you know, the producer doesn't deserve as much as the talent. <laughs> right? So he could get, or she could get... What if you're get, a producer and the talent? 20, yeah, 20%. <laughs> nah, that cancels each other out. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, um, it's, it's a beautiful, it is a beautiful system. And mm-hmm. the more... The more we can get away from advertising, the better a society will be. Oh, I completely agree. Completely agree. Because you're exactly right. The number one problem, and I mean, it happens on the news every day. Mm. Like, the news is supposed to be the news. It's not the news. It's not the news. It is whatever the news has to say to keep their advertisers happy. That's all it is. It's a waving red flag to attract advertisers. 100%. Yeah. And they, you know, they they want to keep your attention for as long as they possibly can to please their advertisers. Mm. Like, I mean, even the ABC news now, like, they, they ABC's got advertising now. Mm. You know, why? Yeah. Like, they're a public broadcaster. Yeah. But they've got advertising now. And, and you see it. You see the slant. It's on a lot of the stories. It's... So we don't want to be... We don't want to be owned by... Anyway, we all no. pay, and we, we currently do I'm going to get paid some, but I would never sell out my myself for money. Because I don't need that much money. I would love to have lots of money, and I, I would be able to enjoy lots of money, but I don't need it, and I would not sell out who I am for dollars. I had a cool thought. I had a cool thought during the week. What's what's going on? I don't know. Is that your phone? No, that's my phone there. That sounds like it's from that room. It's like a FaceTime call, and I don't have... Do you want to just check that quickly if, it's, if someone's ringing your phone? Have we got that on, like, airplane mode or something? No, you keep, you keep talking. This is fantastic content, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we have just got an undisclosed ring happening in here. It could be a bomb. Um, it could be some form of terrorist attack. Uh, we, we don't really know what's going on. Alex is obviously working really hard because he's looking at his computer screen with a frown on his face. Uh, which, as we've already discussed, it does show that you are a hard-working individual. This is what the people pay for. 
this is what you'll be spending your crypto money for. It is, these a blank bit of dead space. Dead I, know, I have no idea. I think someone tried to FaceTime me through Facebook, but I've got, so I run a Galaxy Book S laptop mm -hmm. that's got the same SIM card. Right. And it's got this cool feature, which I really loved to begin with, where it pairs with my Samsung S20 Ultra phone. Mm -hmm. So I could make phone calls and stuff through it, but then one of the updates happened and it just was terrible. Sometimes the audio would come out of one device and the microphone went up. Yeah, okay. yeah. So I deactivated it. And even when it got Bluetooth off and everything, it somehow was talking to it mm. and doing crazy stuff. So yeah, right. yeah that is annoying. But yeah, getting back to the point. So we, we never want to be in a position where you know, we're about to add another business to our shit list, for example, but it's like, oh, they're a sponsor. Like, we can't do that. You know, we, we would prefer to be able to be honest with you about whatever it is that we're speaking about every single time we sure. speak about it, because at the end of the day, that's the whole point of a podcast. The, the, the benefit of a podcast is that you can have a long form conversation about a particular subject and you can be objective on it. You can be honest on it. And again, we make mistakes all the time. Like, we're not going to get it right every single time. And guess what? We'll admit it when we get it wrong too. Yeah. You know, we'll put our hands up and go, hey, you know what, on, on further reflection, we've done some more research and we, we fucked up on that one. Yeah. Um, but that stuff starts to go away. And, and so many of my favorite podcasts have been ruined by advertising. So many of them. Um, and it's a typical thing, right? You, you start listening to them when they're early on the piece and they're not making any money and you feel a passion coming through and you can hear that passion. Yeah. And it's about a subject that you're interested in and that's all they're talking about. And that's fantastic. And then as they get bigger and they get bigger and bigger, the advertisers start coming on and the, the content starts getting uh, mediated. And then next thing you know, it's the same vanilla shit that everyone else is doing. Yeah. Um, a podcast I was just listening to, well, I've only just started listening to, um, is Bloke in a Bar, which is Denon Kemp's podcast. So, Denon Kemp? so Denon Kemp is, oh, Denon. Denon, um, is an ex-footy uh, player. So it is just... It's footy talk, right? So it's about the NRL. And he used to play for the Broncos back in the day. Now, he... That'd be a good one. That'd be oh. a great podcast to listen to. He, NRL uh, players talking. Um, he's really good. Some of his guests, not so good. <laughs> um, but one, one thing that I really like about the way that he's gone about and done things, he only has one sponsor, Bloke in a Bar Beer. So when he left his footy career, because he was, he was very, very good. He wasn't one of the greats, right? Yeah. He just had a solid NRL career. But then he was smart. He took that money and he invested in things. He opened yeah. his own bar called Bloke in a Bar. Yeah. He created his own beer line called Bloke in a Bar Beer. Legend. Legend. Yep. And then he's only just recently started his podcast over the last year or two, I think. Mm -hmm. um, he's got a good social media presence um, and he's able to leverage some of his contacts in, in rugby league to get them to come on. They'll do photo shoots. They'll, you know, you can tag all the Insta followers and stuff like that. But his only sponsor is his beer company. So he, he just talks about Bloke and a Bar Beer at the start of it. And if you want to support him and what he's doing, go and buy a case of beer. Yeah. That's what he wants you to do. Yeah. Um, he was very clever in the way that he marketed his beer too when he first kicked it off. In that he had, he himself individually created partnerships with different liquor stores to sell it. Mm. And then he would say, hey, um, if you take my beer line, uh, I'll, I'll do an appearance at your store. I'll bring some of my mates with me, advertise it to your, to your customers. But can you put bloke in a bar at the front of the store? When you're going to walk in, stuff like that. So he's building himself a brand. That's called vertical integration, where, where you create the steps that benefit yeah, yourself. Yeah, very intelligent. And, and I guess in a way we're doing something similar here. And what, that, did he play? Yeah. What position did he? He was a winger. So not a lot of head hits. No. Yeah, funny that. No, he, he played in the golden days of wingers too, where they didn't have to do much at all. Yeah. He just had to catch the ball and put it down. Um, these days, wingers need to actually get given some credit because they are probably one of the, like one of the hardest working positions as far as meters ran every single game. Um, you know, when they put a kick in, obviously on the on the fifth tackle, they're the ones who are catching it down near the their own try line and trying to run it out of trouble and get smashed by a solid line, all that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, wingers these days a bit of a different breed. But to him, him to his credit, from you know a footy player who's parlayed that into being a savvy business person, um, really, really impressive. Yeah, that's cool. That's, that's, that's cool to see. I, I love the business stuff, but it'd be a lot easier if you didn't have to advertise because mm. you know it, it does seem 
content creation seems to be one of the few things that you have to ask someone else. So you create something, but you have to ask someone else to pay for it. Yeah, Just well, it's, it's, it's being an artist, isn't it? It's like you could be the world's best painter, but you still need someone to buy your painting before you make any money. To see NFTs fix that. To a degree, yep. Yep, you're well, right. it's like better it's, than what a, it, it, it's, it's a better system. The NFT, and for those oh, people who don't know, I've done it spoke about non-fungible tokens, where an artist can create a piece of art, sell it, they get a portion of that of yeah. that sale, uh, well, they get it, the first one, they get all of it, and then from every time that it gets, it changes hands, mm. that artist can set how much they get. It is a far better system than the old system in art where you would be an artist your entire life and then you would die and then your paintings were worth something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then you get nothing. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah you, got, you got nothing on the way through. Yeah, exactly. Um, completely agree. Like, I, I think that's a fantastic thing where you've taken an, an old world skill of being an artist and you apply new world technology to it and it benefits the actual artists mm. themselves. So crypto, crypto fix, so that's a crypto fix. Yeah. Um, I had the thought, because you know I'm selling my properties, right? Yeah. I was wondering if I could picture a world where I don't deal with a bank and I think I can do it. Yeah, I mean, look, it'd be better if you didn't deal with a bank or a real estate agent too. Well, no, I, I gotta have a real estate agent to sell because I don't have a real estate uh, license. Mm. But, but see, isn't that something that should be updated too? Like if you if you own something, you could own any other thing yeah. and you can sell it. You can even own a car. Like you need to have a dealer's license to buy and sell cars, mm. but you can own your own car and you can sell it, but you can't do that with a house. Well, the worst part about the property selling is that they're the ones ripping everybody off. Private yeah. sellers are the ones selling recovery write-offs and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But they don't lose anything. Yeah. It's not against the law. Yeah. Whereas if I do it, it's right, as is on the receipt, you don't. You sort of no, but as a private, you don't do anything. You don't have to do anything, mm. and it's it's buy beware. But when a buyer buys from a dealer, it's yeah. dealer beware. Yeah, and I have to pay all this 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 mm. stuff, and I have to you know I have to jump through all these hoops. So yeah, it's, see, it's, wouldn't it be great if you could just sell your houses and not have to do any work on them? It'd be awesome. Well, that's what I'm hoping to do. This time. fantastic. But no, I was really thinking about the structure. So if I if I sat my like a sum of Binance is, I believe, starting a card, like a Visa card. Okay. So if you're running all your payments off, off that, obviously it's not credit mm. because it's taking out of your funds, although you can get credit in the crypto world. Mm -hmm. So you might be able to stake something to get, you know, you might stake one Bitcoin to, to get 1.5. So you could basically, in effect, have a credit card yeah. running. Um, I, for my business, I could, the banking details could be directly to an exchange. Mm -hmm. So everything's just put straight on an exchange. Yeah. Um, there are ways that I think I could move away from the banks, which would be my ultimate goal because yeah. they suck. They suck. They absolutely suck. Like, I mean, uh, recent example of the bank sucking was um, two months ago when I... Uh, it might have been, been longer than that, I can't remember, but when I um, wanted to buy Afterpay shares, so I was, I was thinking about buying Afterpay because they, they've been going up very, very consistently, mm -hmm. and then they uh, had a massive drop from uh, middle of February. So they were about 160 bucks a share, and they dropped down about $105. Yep. And I was like, okay, I thought that the reasons why they dropped down was because they had to raise $1.25 billion in capital to get into the American market, so I'm thinking massive outlay, but you're increasing your um, your market, your customer base, your customer base. So therefore, that should at least recover. Sure. So I wanted to buy some shares. So I had to get my bank to send some of my money to uh, my Vanguard share account to then purchase the shares. I sent the money on Monday. I didn't see the money in the account to buy the shares until Thursday. And in that time, the shares have gone from $105 to $120. Mm -hmm. So I lost 15 bucks a share. Mm -hmm. If this was crypto, like people have criticized Bitcoin because it takes too long. Well, it's 17 minutes or something like that to, to do a transaction. I would have had it in 17 minutes. And I could have bought them at $105 a share. And Bitcoin's the slowest. If you, there are other cryptos, like if you use Litecoin, it would have yeah. been done straight away. Yeah, it would have been done. And like, let's have a look at what Afterpay is at now. Because I checked it yesterday and it was doing all right. Dude, I had a customer who... So now Afterpay is at 128 bucks. Yeah. I had a customer at 
uh, who wanted to pick their car up on Monday, mm -hmm. they left me a deposit, so CBA to CBA, mm -hmm. left me a deposit on Saturday, instantaneous, boom, straight through, a thousand bucks. So owed nine and a half, and went to the bank and said, hey, if I send this through my phone, will it go through instantly? And they went, uh, and she goes, but I've already sent it money. Oh, wait, that should help. She sat down in front of me, pushed the button, yeah. didn't go through. And I'm like, okay. And she goes, yeah, she, they, the people said it could take some time. I said, it'll be 24 hours, I guarantee. Yeah. No, 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 that's still be faster. I said, check your emails. Yeah. So in the email, Comex says, oh, this is a suspicious amount. For your safety, uh, we're just going to hold on to it for up to 24 hours. In my experience, it has been exactly 24 hours. Yeah. For what? Yeah. To use your own money. So it's now you bullshit. need to ask a bank whether you're allowed to use your own money. Yeah. So the quicker I can I can debank myself, mm -hmm. the better. But I, I genuinely think, or crypto.com offers, offers a, a a Visa card as well. And you as, as long as you stake CRO coins or something on mm -hmm. that card, mm -hmm. then you can use it at, at, at any Visa thing. Right. I think I can genuinely get to the point where I don't have a bank. And see, this is the key, ladies and gentlemen, is... We need to be the ones who go first. Too many times, too many people sit back and they're like, yeah, when, when crypto starts becoming more mainstream, then I'll jump. Yeah. Someone needs to jump first yeah. and, and we need to start making this a normal part of life. Yeah. Because the sooner we do that, this, and again, it doesn't mean we're going to all pull away from the traditional banking sector, but what it means is they're going to feel the pressure. They're going to have to change. Yeah. At the moment, they've essentially got a monopoly on our money, yeah. which is why they, like, you can make a payment on a Friday afternoon, but it's a long weekend, so internet banking gets Monday off as well, and you won't see the money till Tuesday. It Insane. is bullshit. It is absolute Insane. bullshit. But the thing is, because we are so, we're lazy, that's one thing. Yeah. We're also scared of new things, that's yeah. another thing. We just sit around and we go, no, it's better the devil you know than the devil you don't. Oh, and at the same time, the banks are paying for uh, news stories which tell me that Bitcoin uses the same amount of power as a small country. Yeah. Like, again, it's just propaganda and it's bullshit yeah. because they don't want to change the status quo. And but we need to change. And what about every day? Like, we, I can't believe that we feel so loyal to banks when literally every day there's something else money laundering, yeah. insurance scam. And no one goes to jail. Terrorists, like links to terrorism. Yeah. You know, paying Mexican drug cartels. Like all that stuff happens every single day in that space. Yet yeah. we trust them as a truth. Like when I was overseas <clears throat> and you watch finance news, whenever they talk about Australia, they always talk about the strength of our banks. Mm. Of course, when there's only four of them, mm -hmm. and they, they, they rule. They're the like world. a drug cartel. They can do whatever Absolutely. they want. They can do whatever they want in this country. They're backed by the government and they can literally do no wrong. Like I know from doing uh, finance, the amount of modules that I had to complete from these banks with like counter-terrorism financing and um, know your customer and all these modules and stuff like that. So I have to do all of these things. And if I slip up once, I can lose my accreditation. Mm. If I slip up in a big way, I could be blacklisted by ASIC and never be able to sell finance ever again. Yeah. And yet... How many banks aren't allowed to sell because it, exactly. of discretions? Oh, no. we, we go, yeah, like if you were a different institution and you did one of the offences that the banks do, you you lose your licence to sell. Yeah. Like it's, it's insanity. But again, they're all smart. So they're like, oh, Mr. Government, if you sanction me... Uh, you know that superannuation money that you're relying on, so you you don't have people, you know, tapping the social security. Yeah, well, that's probably going to go away, isn't it? So, well, that yeah. they literally like we are negotiating with terrorists. These yeah. are the terrorists of our own country. They control all the wealth and they make all the money and give zero service. Well, the we other need to move example, away from them. So, during COVID recovery, mm. the government is supposed to be sponsoring fifty percent yeah. secured loans yeah, for business. business loans. Yeah. Commonwealth Bank's at the top of that list of, like, there's 15 lenders on there. Mm -hmm. They just outright told me, no, we're not doing it. Yeah. We're not doing it. So, and I said it after ASIC, I, I claimed um, that the banks would hold the Australian economy to ransom yeah. until they get what they want. Now, yeah. what are they working on in the background? What are the banks working on? Yeah. Probably their own cryptos. Well, no, they want less 
protections, less regulation, yeah. less regulation than prior to the GFC. Mm. And that's what they're saying. Well, that's the way that's going to get us out of that this big hole that we've dug yeah. us. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So some, someone that. So for me, when I want to go and get some uh, uh, refinance, or not even, well, I wanted to tap some of my equity in my home. Yeah. To help with this business, yeah. they've just said, "Well, no, because you haven't shown us enough uh, evidence that you can pay." And I'm like, "Well, then take my house off me." Yeah, that's right. Well, obviously, you, you say that I can't pay for my house. Yeah, even though I haven't missed a payment, and, you know, yeah. in, in thirteen years, take my house. Mm. Like, where's that conversation? Yeah, you know, and and um, the only reason why you're not giving it to me is because I'm paying you of a, a a multiplier for the bad debt that I've got through you guys. Yeah, that's right. And you don't want to fix it. No. So you so all, your own all this stuff's supposed to be like um you know, they, they talk about like unconscionable conduct, for example. Yeah. Where, you know, as a as a finance provider, uh oh sorry, I was an intermediary. Mm. So uh I was not allowed to set up a client on a um, financial structure that was unsuitable for their needs. Yeah. Right? However, then, like, I'll always remember this, right? So I had this girl come in um, who was trying to buy a car. And she was trading in a vehicle that she probably paid $40,000 for new, and she had that under finance. Mm -hmm. And she was trying to buy a $20,000 car. Mm -hmm. And she owed some money on her car, but the car, the value of her car was basically paying out what she owed on it. Mm -hmm. And her financial position hadn't changed since the first one, sure. right? So she's earning the same money. Uh, now, the only thing that had changed in the meantime was the banks had got more strict with their uh, living expenses requirements. So she was paying like, I think her current repayment was $150 a week, had never missed a payment. Her new repayment on the new car is going to be about $100 a week. So yeah. she's saving $50 a week. Yeah. Saving $50 a week. But because the living expenses requirements had changed, even though I'm trying to finance her through the same bank that financed yeah. the, the, the current loan and the current loans at a higher interest rate too, like yeah. she's never missed a payment. They're like, no, she she can't afford this. And it's like, but she, she, is, all the more she is replacing she's you an existing loan with you, which puts you at higher exposure to risk because it's a higher amount at a higher interest rate. And you're saying that she can't afford this. And they're like, yeah, no, nah, she can't afford it. Yeah. It's That's true. It. Those... I predicted it. I, yeah. I said that exact thing would happen. Mm. They will, and they will literally just they hold all the purse strings and say, "Do you like this government? Is yeah. this what you want Australia to be like?" Mm. No, you don't. Okay, well then, give us free reign, and we'll get this humming again. Yeah, and so, we're letting those organisations run our economy. That's yeah. right. So, getting back to what the audio podcast stands for, which is personal responsibility and solutions based thinking. Mm. What fixes this problem is competition. Mm -hmm. We need to give the banks real competition in this country. And the way that we do that is by trying to cut them out of as many financial transactions as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. um, you know, paying for some stuff in cash is probably a good way to start. Mm -hmm. It's probably one of the easiest things that you can do. Because if you've got actual physical money in your hands, they're not controlling it. They're not also profiting from the data that's collected. Yep. See, I stopped using like PayWave because I was like, well, I'm doubling the amount of data I'm providing. So now yeah. I'm getting the bank all the data, mm. plus I'm getting Samsung or Google additional yeah. data. Yeah. So I stopped using it. I use the cards I'm only giving the bank. Mm. Or I still deal I still deal quite a bit with, in cash. Yep. So I do have quite a bit of cash. But that is absolutely one of the one of the things you can do. But the, the, I want to try and push it to the next step and I want to see if I can depay myself completely. Yeah. Because why should they profit from it? And mm. they are hugely. They're the ones making all the money, and I'm not. Yeah. Like, and my, I'm literally just, you know, even for my property, which rents for an insane amount of money, the bank's winning. Because because the, the biggest key to it is, um, I can understand paying a business if they provide me a service which is better than what I can do myself. Yeah. That's not the case anymore. No. Right. Like it's not the case anymore. Like we're living in a day and age where you could you could pay someone in a cryptocurrency and it'll be done like that. And so the server, they, they don't have the service edge anymore. They're they don't not have willing, the technology. They don't have the technology. They're not willing to change, no. but they don't have to because no one's putting pressure on them. Because what all they're doing in the background, instead of changing and being better, they're just like, yeah, let's just rubbish crypto. So let's just fund news stories mm. about how negative crypto is for the world. Mm. Because again, what's a buzz term in the world at the moment? Climate change. Mm. So what are they doing? 
oh, if we can just convince everyone that Bitcoin's bad for the environment, anyone who votes green is gonna gonna go back to the banks. Like, think about that for a second. Are you fucking insane? Yeah. Like, are you insane? We're literally trying to talk about taking our world from the old world of you know fossil fuels and um, full uh, corporation control. We're trying to go into this new world. But they're, they're so smart. They're just going to trick people who are really anti-establishment into using the establishment because of climate change. Yeah. It's a joke. Yeah. It's you a know? desperate, desperate move. Yeah. And they're treating people like idiots. And the problem is a lot of people are idiots yeah. because they just eat that shit up and they're just like, you know what? Oh, I heard that, that the Bitcoin uses a lot of power. So glad I'm not in cryptos. Yeah. But I, I never even, you know, I was thinking about maybe doing some research into potentially starting up a crypto account myself, but then I saw that news story and I'm really glad I didn't because yeah. I'm doing my bit for climate change. Yeah. Like it's, yeah. So another thing you can do is instead of having money sitting in the account, invest it, invest yeah. it on the stock market, put it in one of those ETFs. Yeah, and that's... And, and try to look for one that doesn't, that's not in banks, maybe a lot of them will be. But, a lot of them will be. Um, but that's something that I've, I've been really, really happy with mm. is... Um, I mean, in a short period of time of investing, like we are in front dollar-wise than we yep. would have been. And again, it doesn't matter how much it is, we're in front yep. dollar-wise. Yeah, as a percentage, you're better. As a percentage, we're better off. But also capital growth-wise, we're in front. Yep. Um, yeah, you, you've just got to get your money working for you. Because the thing is, if you just leave your money in a savings account, it is working for someone. It's working for the banks. Yeah. The banks are just investing your money and making money off it. Yep. So why don't you invest that money and make money off it yourself? Well, if every dollar that you've got in there, I think the bank, bank's allowed to blend 20 times that. Yeah. I think, I'm not sure what the exact percentage is now because I know it just changed recently, a few years ago. Right. And that's when the banks originally stopped. This was before the Royal Commission when the banks stopped handing out money was because they actually couldn't because they were being forced to hold more capital. Yeah, hold more deposit. Hold more, more, more money in their in their accounts before um, lending it out. And that but even when people's, people say, oh, look, um, at least the cash in my account, that's real. I know what that is. No, it's not. no you don't. <laughs> it's, a, it's a number on a screen. It's a number on a screen. Exactly the same as cryptos. There are a number on a screen. But guess what? Except crypto, you can't double spend. Yeah, yeah, and with the crypto screen, it's a number on everyone's screen. Yeah. With you on a bank, if a, if a bank tomorrow wants to decide that you've got no money in your account, you've got no money in your account. Yeah. Look at what happened in Greece when, when the GFC kicked off. People couldn't get access to their own money. Yeah. They just switched the ATMs off. But you don't even need to use uh, Greece, man. I can't get access to my own money. My customer couldn't get access to their yeah. own money. They had to go to the bank, get the cash out, and then give them back the cash to put it into my account yeah. so they could be done on the spot. Yeah. That is crazy. Yeah, that's right. That is crazy, but we keep doing it and, and everyone's like, oh, the banks are so good. Mm. No, turn, turn the tide. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think that's where we, we leave it. Happy birthday, me. Yeah, happy, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Auto Bros. Auto Bros. Um, if you want to support the channel, support the podcast, uh, consider purchasing your next used vehicle from Auto Bros. Yeah, or, I've got, I don't know if you can see it in the shots, but I've also got some James Bond uh, model cars as well that you, you can buy off me. They're twenty five dollars each. I've got some weird, wonderful cars there. Yeah, right. Yeah, because um, they've got all the uh, the movies on them. What I would really like to see is all of the because they've got like Goldfinger, Diamonds Are Forever, A View to Kill, Tomorrow Never Dies. I'd like to see some of the later ones that you can just have all your Kia Optimas from all the police cars in the latest Bond movies. I think movies. they would have got desperate. There's some cars there that really don't deserve to be there, like that Range Rover there. That, oh, yeah. that car's like eight grand on today's market. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's some cars that I swear were just in the backing shots of all the... Yeah, there's a little 2CV here. Yeah. That's something that special. Very cool. I, I must admit, I back when I was selling... So I started selling keys when they went through their research. So I started selling them in 2011, and that was when um, they had gone from being the old cheap and cheerful to actually trying to release a quality product and change their image. And it was, it was tough, right? It was tough trying to change people's idea of what Kia was. Sure. Same as trying to change people's idea of crypto as opposed to the banks. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's a very similar thing. Bitcoin's a harder sell because they thought I was part of a cult. If you bought a Kia and I thought you were in a cult. No, a no, they just thought you were cheap ass. Yeah. Um, so that was, that was tricky. But I'll always remember the first times I started seeing Kias popping up in movies. Yeah. Because culture is important, right? For sure. So, like, if, if something is culturally accepted in a film, you know, kids watch that film and they're like, that's normal to me. So yeah. that that's a desirable cut. 
And so I remember like there were scenes in some um, of the, I can't remember what the names of it, like the first few Daniel Craig um, Bond movies mm. where they'd be like, I don't know, doing a police chase through Europe or something like that. And they're in, they're in the cool cars, but like all the police cars are like Kia Optimus and there's Kia Sportages yeah. all, all like parked down the street. And I was like, to me, that was cool. Cause I was like, you could see that they had made it, you know? That's a Bond car. Kia, yeah. Bond, Kia car. Bond, Bond car. Oh yeah. And very, very soon it'll be like, you know, like probably when James Bond's maybe a, a, a black woman because that's where it's yeah. going towards, but she'll be getting out of Kia Serrata for sure. Well, obviously the uh, economy apparently is taking such a hit, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Q branch might be a uh, a a lowercase Q as opposed to an uppercase. Yeah, Q. that's and that's actually a good point because they they did some big cost cutting measures in the previous in the latest movies. Did I? Oh, did you? There's a Bond film coming out very soon. Yeah, it wasn't supposed to come out like a year ago. Yeah, and it stopped, yeah, because like, it cost them a fortune and then mm. it was making money back. Yeah. So, yeah, no, very interesting. Mm. Oh. Can you imagine if, like, the the producers of the latest Bond film, they're probably sitting there going, we spent $100 million on this project. Why didn't we just invest that in Bitcoin? <laughs> like, 12 yeah, months ago? Yes. And it would have gone out four times. No, but I'll tell you why. Because, like, Joker, as an example, was cost $50 million to make and grossed a billion. So, so you're not even going to get that. Even if you put Bitcoin in at, um, at the early days, mm. you're not going to get that kind of increase. But the problem is too, I think, like when you talk about Bond films, Bond films are pretty on the nose as far as like the the social discourse these days, right? Well, I wouldn't think that. You wouldn't think that? No. Nah. Why not? No, he's still the same. It, 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 Danny Craig just doesn't hit girls like the old Bonds did. <laughs> yeah. Right? He doesn't hit them. That's like, basically all he's done. He's like, still a womanizer. He's still an anti establishment. He still lacks. I know, but those are all the things you're not allowed to be anymore. Yeah, but it's always been like that. He's always been like that. He's always no, been a rogue hasn't. agent. No, no, it hasn't. It has not always been like that. Pierce Brosnan, when he was like banging chicks with no rubbers as Bond, everyone was like, Pierce is a man. Yeah, no, but the character is exactly the same. That's yeah, what I'm saying. Your but, perception of it is different. No, no, but, society's perception of the character yeah, has changed. But, that's what I'm saying. No, no, but that's not what you said. You said that he, that Bond films have changed. They have not changed. They no, are no, no, exactly that, the same. No, no, that, but that was, that, sorry, I probably not articulated it properly. That is my point. The, the character is outdated now. So the character is a bit on the nose, is what I was saying. Right. Like, compared to society now. Sure, sure, sure. Like, you, you know, I don't know too many, like, white blokes who are womanizers who have been celebrated in the media at the moment. If you haven't realized it, that's a, it's not a good thing right now, you know? Um, so, I, like, I wonder, do Bond films, do they hit as hard as they used to? I don't think they would. Like, well, it's not about, I, I, don't, I don't watch a Bond thing for a cultural war. Uh, you just watch the cartoon. I don't see it as a snapshot of um, of society. Never, never have. Never like those things. Never. When we were kids and Bond movies came out, you would watch those films and go, "I want to be that guy. I want to yeah. be the secret agent man who's the smooth ladies man as well, and drives Aston Martins yeah. and has the coolest gadgets and technology. Yeah. Like you wanted to be that guy. Yeah. I don't think kids growing up these days are like, "I want to be that guy." No, I, I disagree. I disagree. Well, it depends on how good this movie, this latest movie. Yeah, that's probably a good point. Yeah. So, yeah, like that might be the next, uh, the next swivel or swerve in the cultural discourse is depending on how good the next Bond film. Well, is. I'll put it. I'll say this: Bond has no, has no say on culture. That's what I'll say. I'll say they they are completely independent of each other. You think? Um, yeah, I reckon the only thing that's changed is they stopped hitting girls. <laughs> <laughs> but why do they change that? Well, I don't know, maybe he does in this movie. <laughs> maybe there's a swoop <laughs> backhand coming in the Could you stuff. just imagine if in the latest film they're like, you know what, like, we need to do what everyone else is doing. We just need to ramp this up. <laughs> like, Sean Connery Bond, backhand and chicks, that is rookie numbers, you gotta get those numbers up. And he just comes out and is just like, I don't know. You might have uh, some sort of female minority as the as the villain. <laughs> he just you remember that scene at the end of um of what's the latest Quentin Tarantino film? Hollywood. Uh, yeah. Uh, Last time Hollywood. Yeah. You know, at the end of it, that really uh, intense scene. Spoiler alert! Of um, is it Brad Pitt like destroying no, that DiCaprio? DiCaprio. Sorry, just yeah. des destroying that woman. Yeah. 
if if that happens again in the latest Bond film, <laughs> like, and that's why Tarantino's not allowed to do Bond. Films. <laughs> yeah, but that was a very popular film too. So yeah, maybe was, maybe I'll maybe I'm right. Maybe they'll maybe everyone will be lined up to watch Bond. Exactly. Like, there is no <laughs> correlation between culture <laughs> and Bond films. We just want to get back to the good old days. <laughs> anyway, on that joyous note, happy birthday, Auto Bros! Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>